Hey guys, I'm trying to change the lighting a little bit. Something's going on here. Um, I'm going to try to make this video even quicker. Um, I've had people email me and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, I know it's got to be really, really hard and really, really difficult for you to share these things and for you to be so vulnerable, for you to spill your guts out the way that you have, for you to, to bear your soul to the world as hard as it's got to be for you. People have told me, like, Heather, I want you to know that this has been such an inspiration to me. People from all I've been talking about all over the world, other states and even other countries in the past. I don't make these videos for those of you that want to troll my account, for those of you that are affiliated with somebody, maybe with my ex-husband or just somebody that wants to, not my ex-husband wouldn't do it, he wouldn't, he's, but like somebody that, like I've had people troll my account before and try to like start arguments with me about the custody battle with my child. You're going to be blocked. Those are the kind of things I'm not going to deal with. And that's another reason why I really struggle with making these videos. There's that part of my flesh. This is where we get back into the flesh and the spirit. There's that part of my flesh that says, who gives a crap about what I'm going through anyways? Why would I bother? Like, what is the point? When I was at that hotel, I did not want to... When I started the channel for the Alabaster Box, it was supernatural the way that it happened. I had felt like the Lord had been leading me in that direction, but I wasn't for sure, and so I had not started it yet. And I'm telling you, one day, it was forced upon me to where it started, and I was like, okay, Lord, I get the hint. And even at the hotel, I had shared with you guys in videos, I did not want to reach out and ask for help. I did not, um, I feel like a bug's flying up my nose. I did not want to... You know how like a missionary will reach out and say, hey, I can't do this without your support. I see other YouTube channels that do the same thing. They're like, I cannot bring you this research. I cannot do this ministry. Whether your ministry is researching and sharing your research, whether your ministry is out witnessing and evangelizing, because there's things I haven't even told you guys yet. And honestly, like right now I'm looking at the time. It's 926. The friend that I'm staying at um, she is at a ladies meeting tonight at her church with a couple of her friends. Now normally I would have gone to that. The last several times I went to the ladies meeting with her. The only reason I didn't was because i am been frustrated that all these videos I've tried to make, YouTube won't let me up. It, it won't upload. It gets to be 70, 80%, 90% and then it, the process aborts. So I told her, I said, no, I'm going to stay here and work and do these videos. But I'm just trying to be honest with you guys, okay? And again, if you're sticking with me this long and you're still watching these videos, all glory to God, saying thank you for your patience, thank you for loving me enough to care, okay? I struggle with, first of all, I never wanted to reach out and ask for financial support. I did not want to do it. I'm telling you, it to the point that it, it physically made me ill. Making this update, this five, six, seven part update, I'm in the same position. I was like... Not only were the videos not uploading, when I was at the hotel a couple months ago, I tried to do videos. When I came here, I tried to do a video. About a couple weeks ago, I tried to do a video again. When I was at the one lady's house, I didn't have internet connection. In other words, you guys, I've been all over the place, okay? I've literally been weaving in and out all over the place, living out of luggage, okay? I don't have any peace in my life right now. And I know people say, oh, well, you have Jesus, you have peace. Let me just tell you something. I have Jesus, and I have God okay but that doesn't mean and I have them who I always turn to them they are my refuge yes okay for sure but at the same time I am not God I am not Jesus see this it's still flesh so that means I'm still in the flesh which means I'm still struggling with fleshly things okay when you have been thrown into situation after situation after situation after situation after situation where you are uncomfortable where you don't feel like you fit in where you don't feel like you belong where it's not your home it's somebody else's home it's not your belongings it's not your couch it's not your bed it's not your bedroom it's not your desk it's not actually there's two desks in my room I mean you know what I'm saying it's not your food it's not your food in the refrigerator I mean, one of the friends from homeless ministry has brought me food on different occasions. Praise God. All glory to God for him and anyone else that's ever helped me. You don't know how much I appreciate you. 
and I love you. And I've told this to one of my other friends, and actually I've told this to several people, especially people that I'm closer to. If you've emailed me in the past, if you're closer to me and you know me better, like you've known me kind of since the beginning of my journey three, four years ago, and we've talked, people know who they're, like, you should already have an idea as to whether or not you're somebody that I would trust to give out my address to. But my point is this, if you've ever helped me, I don't care if it was with $5, I don't care if it was with $3, if you've ever helped me, thank you, thank you, thank you. I never wanted to ask for help. It was the last thing I wanted to do, okay? If I wanted to ask for help, um, I would have probably, every time the videos wouldn't upload, I probably would have tried a hundred more times to upload them. I've been dreading making these videos. Not only for that reason, but for the simple fact that it's too overwhelming. Like, I'm already at, what, five minutes on part one, two, on part five, and I'm still, my mind is still going. I'm still overwhelmed with what do I share next? How do I share it? Like, how do I really verbalize or really express what's been going on and what I've been going through to where I can really express? where I can really get it across to you so you have an understanding of what it's really like when you actually lose everything. Everyone in this nation is so used to having everything, including myself. And I'm not talking about, like I said earlier, being dripping in diamonds. I'm not talking about walking around with 15 coach bags and $500 stilettos and you've got diamonds everywhere. Not, not like, not like $3 cubic zirconias in your ear like me, like I've had for years. But, you know, like you're dripping in jewelry, di like expensive diamonds and things like that. I mean, you were, it's like I said, and, and the other thing that I realize and recognize that people don't get is what it's like living without a spouse, living without a male, living without a husband, living without a man that is there to take care of you, that's there to put their arm around you, that they're there to comfort you. They're there to say, I love you. It's okay, sweetheart. It's going to be okay. They're comforting you. They're bringing you. Then you turn around in your kitchen and you're making your nice dinner and your children are there and you've got your dog running in and, you know, yeah, you've got your life stresses, but for the most part, your life is still comfy cozy. When you're a woman on your own and you've had all your things thrown out on the lawn and you've been evicted and thrown out twice and, and all your things are in storage garages and they're constantly threatening. Every, I feel like every direction I look is a threat. I literally feel like I'm on the front line of a battlefield by myself. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Because all of these comforts are gone. They're gone. They've been taken. And yes, two of my cats are back, thank God, but it's like, you know, one of my cats, I don't, she's at that guy's neighbor's, I don't even know exactly what neighbor, like, I haven't even got to see her, like, you think that doesn't break my heart? You think it doesn't break my heart? I've had, I, I rescued her, she was only nine months old, I rescued her from the Humane Society. You think it doesn't break my heart that I, after going through a whole custody battle for my faith, that I finally get some kind, some kind, quote unquote, of normalcy back with my child, and then I end up having my car repossessed, and now I'm right back to barely being able to see him because I don't have a ride? Do you think that for a normal person who had a bank account closed, it shouldn't be that big of a deal? But whenever you've lost your car, whenever you have no money, whenever you have no nothing and you have no means to get to the bank, and then your bank is associated with your PayPal, which is associated with your YouTube, like everything becomes 10 times bigger. And the phone is ringing, hi, this is storage such and such uh, garage. We need to know, are you going to be able to pay this amount of money? Because right now you're about thirteen to $1,500 behind. Um, we haven't received payments since January, basically, since you first moved your stuff in here. And, you know, we never know when we're going to begin an auction date. And all your personal belongings are going to be just put out to the wind. And then I'm getting text messages from the other storage place telling me the same thing, that they've got an auction coming up next week. And I'm in the wilderness on a bike putting in applications for minimum wage jobs that it's already been made clear to me by the Lord. I don't know what's going to pan out and what's going to open. I'm desperate. I told him, I said, God, I feel like I'm danged if I do and danged if I don't. Because the place where I'm staying at, you know, it's common sense. She needs for me to have some kind of money coming in. Bottom line, I'm, I'm in her home. I'm eating her food. I mean, she's had cancer five times, breast cancer, and brain cancer twice. I mean, it's not her. I mean... She's already putting a roof over my head. But at the same time, my concern is this. Even if one of these minimum wage, like let's say one of these restaurants hires me, okay, for $7 and something an hour. Do you know how many hours you have to work to even bring home $100? 
after taxes, ties, whatever. And here's the other thing. My concern is, am I going to get fired in the first week because, well, it was raining and thunderstorming, which means I couldn't ride my bike however many miles through the woods in the dark, and I don't have a ride to get there, so now I'm going to get fired anyway? There's a gas station on the corner. I put my application in. That's the one I shared with you earlier when I said, I thought for sure that'd be a shoe-in. Like, okay, surely God will open that door because he knows I need money, and yes, I'm way overqualified. That'll just be a shoe-in, right? Automatic. They're going to hire me. I mean, duh. No. No, no. Nope. No. And even before I went and talked to that manager again, I spoke to her on the phone. I talked to her in person. I tell, I'm telling you, I already got it in my spirit. Do not make assumptions that I'm going to open these kind of doors for you. Because of the call in my life. The thing about being a prisoner of the Lord, I'm not talking about being behind literal bars, but it feels like bars, okay? Is this is where I get sick and tired of people throwing stones at me is, okay? They think that you have the power to change it. You can just do it yourself. You just make the decision what you're going to do and do it. It's not the truth. Listen, we are not living in the same time that we were living in five or ten years ago. Five or ten years ago, there's a lot of things that if I would have tried to do, God probably would have let me do them in mercy. Okay? For example, one of them's dating. He, I was dating back then. I don't date now. I am completely do not date anybody. Um, nor am I permitted. In other words, it's, it's understood I'm not dating anybody and I have men that have hit on me and it becomes very awkward for me but I'm not dating because I see him as my husband and that's what he's told me and that's how he wants me to see him but the thing about God is even though he's tangible and like Abraham walked with God even though God was invisible it's the Bible says Abraham walked with him as though he was visible even though God is it's like he's visible even though he's not and he's tangible. He's still God and you're still human. So at the end of the day, it's not like he's standing there with his arm around you like, come on, sweetheart, it's okay, don't worry, baby, I got it. It's gonna I'm gonna take care of everything, honey, it's gonna be okay. I don't have that comfort ever. Instead, I get people throwing stones saying, well, I don't get it. Why don't you just go back to your career? Why don't you just go back to your Fortune 100 company? Which brings me to another point. He showed me in the Word yesterday. One of the names of the fallen gods is spelled G-A-D, right? But it's, it's, it looks like it would be pronounced Gad, but it's really God is how it's pronounced. Go figure. A lot of you probably already knew that. Well, the literal Hebrew translation for that is the word fortune. Interestingly enough, when you think of like Fortune 500 companies or Fortune 100 companies, I was working for a Fortune 100 company. Not only was I, not only was I representing a Fortune 100 company as an insurance agent, Able to sell everything, auto, home, renters, life, ma marina, yacht, uh, life insurance, uh, annuities, all that kind of stuff. Um, the company that I represented was one of the fifth largest in the entire world, globally speaking, for the kind of work that we did. And I find it interesting that one of the false gods, whose name is Gad, but it's pronounced God, which leads me to another video that I'm going to be making, because, I mean, I'm making a stream of videos at this point. I'm just going to get it all. I'm just putting it all out there for you guys. I figured, heck, if I'm going to make part one, part two, part three, I might as well make part four, part five, part six, and just get it over with, because, to be honest with you, it's almost going to be a weight off of my chest, because there's a lot of times that there's... There's a lot of times I want to make a quicker video for you guys just to share with you something that happened in ministry or things that happened to me in the town when I'm on that bike and I'm like trying to open up conversation with these Jewish people. These, most of these Jewish people are non-Messianic and so there's sometimes things I want to share or something, but I haven't been able to because, that, because I feel that sense of responsibility to get out an update video first. And I already knew the update video was going to be huge because of everything that's been going on and because of how long it's been, because my life is a train wreck. But, um, so, honestly, this just needed to happen, so hopefully these all upload easier. But anyways, it was a Fortune 100 company, and I find it interesting that one of the false gods named G-A-D looks like Gad, but it's God. I find it interesting that the Hebrew literal translation for that is Fortune, and I was represented a Fortune 100 company. Um, and on top of that, um, 
there was something else I was going to say. I can't remember. Um, let me stop this video here, and I'm going to go on to, I guess it's going to be part one, two, three, four, five, part six. Wow. See you in a minute.